Hi everyone, I'm Joy Callejas, here with Extreme Times and ExtremeTimes.org. We're here in Farbo with Linda Espinoza and her husband, who they call Sami. Yes, and um, we came out to talk to Linda because Extreme Times got a glimpse of how freely Linda and her family shared her husband's illness with the community. Her insight of how important the community involvement is and support um, at times like these uh, really caught our attention. And so we wanted to make sure everyone knew how hard it is on her family and how willing she is to share her story. What a beautiful story with us. Okay, Linda, we're here because um, we were touched uh, by how your family uh, has opened up to us, very personal, and your and your life to the community. Your husband, who I understand, they call Salami, and I wasn't for sure. Uh, yeah, and that's it's a beautiful name. Uh, he's been diagnosed with ALS, as I understand. Um, also called Lou Gehrig's disease. Yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you for opening up your house to us. You have a beautiful home, beautiful family. Um, why did you feel it was important to share? Well, my reason um, for actually wanting to share um, what is happening to our families because I believe that there's so many families that are out there, you know, and honestly, I mean, I don't know if, I know they're struggling as much as we are, um, you know, but I, I just I just feel it's important to try to, um, you know, to try to connect with other families that, um, I mean, maybe need help. Maybe there's something that we're doing that might be working for us, and, you know, we can extend it and say, hey, this is working. Maybe we're going to something that they're not going to, and so, it, you know, I do feel it's important. Um, but more importantly, you know, we had that ALS challenge, and so I just want people to know what ALS really is about. It's, you know, it's it's great that everybody's come out and they support it. I mean, there there's over $100 million that have been raised from this, um, you know, but the thing of it is, is that in the end, I mean, you know, there are families, families are being torn apart, but, you know, the family members, they're dying, they're dying. It's not just something that, you know, and I hate to be so blunt, but that's what it is. That's what it is. And you know what? I mean, something has to be done. I, I want to take a stand and I want to say, you know what? We have to do something. We can't just sit back and just be like, you know, it's someone else's family. No, you know what? It could be your family. It it doesn't it doesn't discriminate anymore. Before it used to be a certain age. Now you hear people 27, you know, all ages, and uh, and it can affect anyone. You know, fathers, mothers, sons, daughters. You know, and I just want to be a voice for that. Yeah, and so. that's awesome that you're bringing. A, that's awesome that you're bringing awareness and telling that because it, it can affect everyone. And some people don't realize sometimes that you know it may happen to you or your family. And I, own, I, I understand that, and that's awesome. So tell us about the event you just held a few Saturdays ago for ALS. Um, we, we, uh, we got together here at the, at the high school. The high school is very generous in uh, allowing us to have it at the, um, at the uh, baseball field, varsity baseball field. And we uh, kind of changed the name and, and you know, said it was our field of dreams because, I mean, I walk that walk every day. And every time I'd go by there, it was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I mean, Lou Gehrig, start, he's a baseball player. Uh -huh. And so it just kind of like yeah. just all clicked. And uh, But, you know, I just, to me, I, I believe that a cure is possible. I believe that, you know, now no one knew about ALS. And now the whole nation knows. So now it's up to us to demand that something be done. Yeah. And so um, the money, you know, that, that, I mean, like we did that and, and uh, you know, the community came out. We had about 100 people. And, um, you know, and, and it just shows that, you know, people really do want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, you just got to, sometimes you got to just be the leader and say, hey, you know, and give them the opportunity to step up. And they will every time. Okay. And what can people do throughout the year to help with ALS? Well, um, they can uh, they can give to the uh, the foundation to the organization. Um, our for the Central Valley, uh, we have it's ALS um, uh, Golden West chapter, and um, that chapter you know not to say that everybody shouldn't, but I mean this is a chapter that serves our our community. You know our our community of you know, here in the valley. And so, um, you know, it, it, it provides the money to be able to um, provide services for d patients and 
um, you know, and get help. I mean, we have uh, Margie Batrak is she's our um, our our um, care manager, and so she comes to our home, and anytime we call, you know, she's available. And and so when we did our walk last, year, that's what the you know we're also raising money for a walk that we're going to be having in, on October 25th in Fresno, and uh, so we have our team, and our team is uh, Salami's dream team. Um, you know, and uh, so with that, uh, last year was our first year. We probably had about 50 people. This year, we hope to have more than that. Um, my goal is 100. Um, and uh, it just, you know, it, it it's like, uh, like I said, this, the challenge, it's awakened a nation. And, you know, and it's possible, you know, for us to be able to, you know, to, to help find the cure, part of it. That's when you mentioned that you had 50, and we want to help you reach to that goal to 100. At extremetimes.org, we have um, posted photos and videos of your Ice Bucket Challenge event. Mm -hmm. um, tell us more about the event and how it went, who showed up, and all of that. Well, we had, um, again, we had uh, over 100 people, and we had, um, you know, of course, all my kids, our, uh, our family. Um, we had the superintendent of our high school there, our athletic director, vice principal, um, principal. I mean, they were all there, you know, and they were all there to support us. They donated, um, you know, and, and uh, again, the, the community that, you know, that um, we were on 24, so we were able to kind of tell, let people know, so, but. You know, the high school has been very helpful, very generous in, in helping us, and uh, that so is the community. So, um, Salami's Dream Team, that's the name of your organization, yes. correct? And what do you have to say about who uh, want to help out and who want to join the Dream Team, and how do they go about doing that? Well, um, they can, uh, on Facebook, I, we have a link, because it's actually a link that will go directly to um, our, our team. Um, but at... Um, ALS.org, I believe, so I'm kind of bad about that, but um, uh, you'll, you, you can go on there for, if you're looking for Walk to Defe for the Central Valley Walk to Defeat ALS 2014, and it's here in the Central Valley, it's in Fresno at Copper River, and uh, if they go there, they can join our team, and they don't necessarily, if they can't walk, because there are people that, that can't do the walk, it's a two-mile walk, um, not a fast walk, it's just, you know, uh, and if they, so if they sign up, um, they can even become virtual walkers, which is they can be on our team and they can donate and they don't have to, they don't have to do the walk if they don't, you know, if they don't want to, but they can be there at the event. It's a, an amazing event. Um, they have an auction. They have, it's just, they have a lunch for everybody. It's just a, a really good event. To what is it that people find hard to understand about the challenge? Understand, uh, people don't understand the ice, book, the ice bucket challenge. They don't understand that it's more than just pouring ice water over your head. Oh, yeah. You touched on one that I really want to talk about. My ears are ringing, so that means it's <laughs> something that I, whenever I get vibration in my ears, uh, you know, that I've heard a lot of people say, um, you know, well, you're wasting water, you're doing all this, and it's a waste. This is a life. This is my husband's life, you know, uh, other people's lives. And the thing of it is, is that how many times do we stand in the shower for how long letting water run? How many times do we waste water doing everything? I mean, to me, I feel like um, we're made up of, what, 90% water? Yes. I feel like we're pouring it back into ourselves, you know? I feel like, um, you know, I feel like it blessed us. I feel, I do, I feel like it blessed us. When I go by there and I, I think of the people that did that challenge with us, I mean, it, it gives me chills because I just think of how amazing it was that they would stand up with us and say, like, we're gonna take a stand with you, you know? And anybody else that has done it aside from that place, um, I think that, you know, people need to really uh, stop and think that th these are lives, you know, and if, if something isn't done, you know what's gonna what's gonna happen? You know it, people are it's they're gonna you know it's gonna continue every 90 minutes somebody gets ALS, every 90 minutes somebody dies from ALS, you know. And so uh, you, I don't know. You know you gotta weigh a life or water. We've been in drought situations before, and I'm not saying that it's not an important thing. Of course it is, but you know what? This is a you know this we're fighting for lives.